Buck picked up one of the shots of tequila sitting on the table and tossed it down his throat. <sighs> he wiped the back of his hand across his mouth. A look of intense concentration had come over his face. He turned to gaze at the bar, where the Navajo girl stood talking quietly to Gomez, who spoke her native tongue. I'm thinking we ought to ride down to Gallup. That's where Baggett and Hooper said they were headed. Maybe we can hook up with them and find some job to pull down there. It's been long enough since that other business. They have banks in Gallup. That they do. Oh, 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 wait a minute. What are we going to do for money between here and there? I told you, time we settle up with Gomez, we ain't going to have any more. That ain't a problem. We just won't settle up with Gomez. Senor, you must be joking. I never joke. Casually, Buck drew his left-hand gun and shot Gomez. <laughs> Gomez fell forward, landing across the bar with his arms flung out in front of him. He stayed that way for a second before gravity took over and hauled his body down behind the bar. Shut her up. Carlson got to his feet and lumbered toward her. I got just the thing. Before he got there, a large figure with a shotgun burst through the doorway leading to the living quarters in the rear of the cantina. Carlson, look out! Me quedo en puta madre! Julio leaped up out of his chair and came out with a throwing knife. The blade flickered across the room and lodged itself into the throat of the woman. She was Gomez's wife, and she had heard what was going on in the cantina as she rolled tortillas in the back room. Choking and drowning in her own blood, she managed to pull both triggers on the shotgun, but the twin barrels had dropped so that all the double charge of buckshot did was blow a hole in the dirt floor. But then she toppled to the side. You are a lucky man, amigo. If not for me, that cow would have blown your head off. Yeah, I owe you my life. You want to go first with the girl? Julio started across the room to retrieve his knife. No, you go ahead. I am in no hurry. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've been looking forward to this. <laughs> the girl had stopped screaming. She cringed away, scuttling across the dirt floor as Carlson reached for her. She had been with many men in the time she had been here at Gomez's place. Some of them had been bad men and treated her rough. But these three were different, she sensed. These three would not leave her alive when they rode away from here. Julio pulled his knife out of the dead woman's throat and used her skirt to wipe the blood from the blade. Do you think anyone will come to see what their shots were about? Not likely. Those villagers will be too scared to come out of their holes, like the rabbits they are. He downed another shot of tequila. <sighs> now we don't have to settle up with Gomez. I bet there's even some money in his till that we can help ourselves to. We'll have enough to make it to Gallup. See. Si. I believe you're right. Damn it, girl, don't run away from me. You're just making worse for yourself. <laughs> Not that it could get a whole lot worse than what I got in mind for you. <laughs> the big man suddenly lunged forward. A ham-like hand at the end of a thick, heavy-muscled arm wrapped around the girl's slender arm. Carlson jerked her toward him. I'd let her go if I was you. <laughs> the three outlaws looked toward the door. They hadn't heard a horse come up, but the man who stood there had to have gotten to the village some way. He wasn't one of the villagers, that was for sure. With the brilliant sunlight behind him, they couldn't make out anything except his tall, broad-shouldered silhouette, topped by a flat-crowned hat. Mister, you are a damn fool. If you've got any sense, you'll turn around and walk away from here. Hell, if you're smart, you'll run. <laughs> That's one thing nobody's ever accused me of. Being smart. His head turned slightly as he looked at Carlson. I said, let her go, fatty. <laughs> Carlson shoved the girl against the bar and took a step toward the newcomer. Why, you son of a bitch! I think I'll kill you last. Those two bastards, though, they strike me as being more dangerous. The voice was so smooth, it took a heartbeat for the three hard cases to grasp the implication of the words. Get him! <laughs> Buck exploded from his chair, clawing at both guns. The stranger went for Julio first. Julio was already crumpling to the floor when Buck had both guns out, their barrels rising. The slugs punched into his chest. The dead body tripped over the chair and crashed to the floor. That left Carlson. He had succeeded in dragging out his Remington while the stranger was disposing of Julio and Buck. He even got a shot off that knocked chips of adobe from the edge of the door as the stranger crouched. The stranger took aim. Carlson's head jerked back, but he managed to stumble ahead a couple of steps as the knowledge that he was dead slowly penetrated his piggish brain. His knees hit the floor, then he pitched forward on his face. The stranger didn't pouch his iron. 
He stalked into the cantina and held the gun ready as he checked the bodies to make sure they were dead. Buck and Carlson were, but breath still rasped in Julio's throat as he lay there with his arms crossed and pressed to his bleeding stomach. The stranger bent down and plucked the gun from Julio's holster, placed it on the table. He took the knives he could see, too. It was possible Julio had more hidden on him somewhere, but gut shot as he was, it was also possible he would never regain consciousness. He'd probably be lucky if that turned out to be the case. Dying from a bullet in the belly was a bad way to go. The stranger moved to the bar, where the Navajo girl still cowered. Are you all right? The stranger holstered his gun. She stared up at him in disbelief. Like an angel, he had swooped in to save her, drawing his gun and firing with a speed the likes of which she had never seen before. And she had witnessed several gunfights here in Gomez's cantina. Are you hurt? No, not an angel, considering he was dressed all in black from head to toe. Devil was more like it. He had the devil's own skill with a gun. He would have been handsome, the girl thought, with that long sandy hair and close-cropped beard, if not for the coldness in his eyes. Yet despite that coldness, the chilly glint that said he cared for nothing and no one, he had risked his life to save her. Julio and Carlson had both come within a whisker of killing him. The fight could have turned out very differently, but it hadn't. Yes, I... not hurt. Good. His eyes went to the woman. Was she your mother? No, no. she... Uh, Gomez's wife. Gomez? The girl pointed behind the bar. The stranger took a look shook his head. Sorry, you just worked here? The girl nodded. Well, I reckon it's your place now. Unless Senor and Senora Gomez have any relatives who want to claim it. Her place? The girl couldn't imagine owning anything other than the dress she wore, let alone having her own business. The idea was... interesting, though. <sighs> I'll find someone to help get these bodies out of here. He turned toward the door. The girl plucked at the sleeve of his shirt. Senor, do you leave? Uh, no. If you stay, I'd be uh, very good to you. Sorry. I had business with those three, and now it's done. I'm just sorry I didn't get here in time to save Senor and Senora Gomez. You knew uh, those ba bad men? I knew them. But they not act like uh, they knew you. I've changed a mite since the last time they saw me. Senor. Julio had regained consciousness in time to hear what the stranger said. As the man came over to him, Julio fought off the incredible pain in his belly and went on. Who are you? Morgan. Some call me Kid Morgan. I never... I never heard of you. You knew me by another name. Remember when you were in Carson City a while back? You remember Black Rock Canyon? No. <gasps> Dios mío, no. We heard you... You were dead. You heard wrong. You came all this way to find us. You three were just the first. You won't be the last. It's like hell, doesn't it? Si, sí, senor. I have no right to ask any favors of you. You sure don't. But I beg you, in the name of El Señor Dios... Who will send me to hell? End it now. Spare me this pain. You didn't spare me any. The kid straightened and drew his gun. But I reckon I can give you what you want. If you give me what I want. He looked over his shoulder at the girl, who watched with wide, dark eyes. Run along for right now. Go find somebody to help you. Tell the people in the village that it'll be all right. Don't worry. I'll be gone soon. She hesitated, then started tentatively toward the door. She was running by the time she went through it. Fifteen minutes later, Kid Morgan got what information he could and returned the favor. Kid Morgan walked out, untied the reins of a buckskin horse from the hitch rail, and swung up into the saddle. He turned the horse and rode at an easy pace out of the village. Although he was glad he had caught up to the three men in time to save the girl from whatever they had planned for her, their deaths didn't ease the pain inside him. He wasn't sure anything could do that, unless he could figure out how to turn back time. To go back to a better place, a better time, to the world he used to know. 
to the man he used to be.